Kirkendall, author, speaker, very wise woman, <laughs> dear friend. Dear friend. You know, story seems like a real buzzword today. I mean, instead of going, you know, how are you? People go, what's your story? Why is that? What's that about? Well, first of all, it would be really good if what's your story replaced how are you. Uh, what's your story is a much more revealing kind of question, better answers. But it's because we live in a postmodern world, and you know this. It's like, you know, everybody wants to experience God's love, not just know about God's love intellectually. And stories are experiential. That's why they have power. Hmm. They make faith real and God real, and they have the power to to teach and to inspire. And when you wrap your whatever you're trying to communicate in a story, it's so memorable. They, power to influence in that way. I mean, for instance, think if someone's in a job interview and, and a person asks a question and you want to show that you've mastered a skill, you might say, well, I learned that in a weekend where I had to teach myself about that application on the computer in order to meet a deadline. And you're suddenly giving a pulse to an answer mm -hmm. because it's a story. Flushing it so, out. Yeah, mm -hmm. much more real, much mm -hmm. more memorable. So mm -hmm. stories have the power to do all that and the power to entertain. Uh, that's true. Yeah, they're very memorable. They're yeah. kind of fun, too. Yeah. You talk about the three C's of character and conflict, conflict and, and change. change. Yeah, yeah. It sounds a little bit form formulaic, and I know that in my life, um, stories are a little bit more unique and not always formulaic. I know. Sometimes we don't creative. like formulaic. Yeah. We don't like formulaic. You know, I think people need so, sort of a baseline, something to go from when they're learning and practicing storytelling. And I like to say that those three C's are kind of like underwear. Okay. Okay. They're very necessary and they shape the results, Ooh. but nobody else will see them. But it really is important to give mm. people something like character, conflict, and change mm. that they can start to operate from when they're learning and thinking about how to tell their story. So in other words, you don't just like leave out one, because I could do that, just do the character and the conflict and forget no. the whole point. They I've weave together. They weave together. Okay. And you can see this in all the stories okay. that you hear. And it makes it more real, I guess. You, I know you talk about authenticity. Truth telling is so important, isn't it? You know, I think that our vulnerability and our honesty is one of the most important parts of our stories. We kind of wrap ourselves in religious cliches and we have these answers that are so pat that nobody hears them anymore like oh just God never gives us more than we can handle and you know all the, or these things that just you know it doesn't relate to our lives but when we're honest enough and vulnerable enough to talk about the brokenness in our lives mm -hmm. then we are not only revealing ourselves but we're we're doing something that's contagious so that other people open up and say, oh, I didn't know you struggled with that. And therefore, they're more ready to tell about their struggle. Um, don't we all just have a bunch of paradoxes in our lives? You know, for instance, I can be really nice and whoa. I can be not so nice. Really? Yeah. I know that part of you. <laughs> I can believe and I can doubt uh -huh. and I uh -huh. can be filled with happiness for someone else and be filled with envy and self-pity for myself or I can say that I believe God's enough and yet be really irritated with you if you don't meet my high need for affirmation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When we can talk about this kind of brokenness we have in our lives, we're opening not only ourselves up to knowing God better but letting other people know us better mm -hmm. and that they're going to be more willing to tell about the struggles in their own lives. It's like they can see the contrast in themselves too when we reveal the contrast in ourselves. I mean, I am not all happy to happy all the time like you're talking <laughs> about. And people, you know, they get a certain image from the outside. And I, I guess I'm often struck by how we perpetuate these myths of perfection and happy little Christian world when we're really in process. And so I guess what you're saying is the more we model that process authentically in our storytelling, the more we really encourage others to do so. If we think about then, uh, one more question is, what's the, what's the power of story in our own lives? Oh gosh. What happens in us? You know, um, we have started a ministry at our church called Stories. 
and it's been a wonderful women's ministry where we have a woman tell her story every week. And um, the most surprising part of that ministry has been the storytelling training because we have women who are coming to this training and they are just discovering so much about themselves. It's just been an amazing part of this ministry. They're putting their words or words to their feelings and they're sorting through past memories and picking out the ones that define themes in their lives or help them understand why they've responded to something in the way they did. Because, you know, life isn't just about what happens to us. It's really a lot about how we respond to that. So these women have found this um, connection or disconnect between what they say they believe and how they live their lives. And that's where the conflict mm. is. We had one mother uh, tell her story so powerfully. It was about her son being gay. And she said, um, she said, here was this conflict and tension between what I know scripture says and my unconditional love for my son. And as she shaped her story, what she realized is there was the gap of grace in that. And she had never defined it as that, but it gave her a place to stand on her story and say that her call was to unconditionally love her son. So you see, in shaping our stories, we find out things about ourselves and about God, and in telling them, we help others to find out similar things in their own lives. I can't believe how you just described that, and I, th I think that is such a, a rich takeaway that we often think, well, I don't have a story to tell, or my story's not dramatic, or I don't know how to tell my story. And what you're really saying is that the very process of learning to tell our story, while it absolutely is about others, and you've unpacked that beautifully in your article, and in the interview, and in our videos, you're also really emphasizing that when we tell our story, God shapes us. That's a beautiful takeaway, Carol. Thank we you. grow and change mm -hmm. in that yes. way. Okay. Tell your story.